At this point, you're probably feeling a little overwhelmed by all the choices and tools that you've been seeing and like you don't know where to even begin. So I thought it might be helpful if I did a walkthrough of uh, a typical process that you could use. And it's very basic, but it can get you started because sometimes when you have this many choices, it's just like you need to pick a few things, narrow it down and just like begin. And then once you kind of master those, then you can go back and add other effects and so on. So let's go to File and New. And I'm going to do different settings from what we've been doing because I want to show you how you could actually set this up for a tablet so that it's readable on some standardized dimensions. So I'm actually going to use pixels instead of inches, PX. And the width, I want to set it to 2304 and the height to 3072 and the resolution to 600. And we're going to use paper color, just white. And we're not going to use any manga draft settings because we don't really need that for when we're creating a page digitally, because we're not going to be cutting. There's not going to be any bleed or anything like that. And we're also going to set our multiple pages to just two pages so that we have something to qualify as a story. If you have a EX version, if you don't just do one page and we can do something very similar. And with that, we can just hit OK. Oh, we need a file name. And I'll call this my uh, Digicomic. OK. And it will make it, and it, it'll look slightly wider, I think you'll notice, compared to the pages we've been using before. So here's our first page. And, and I'm just going to show you like a really simple illustration that we can do in a panel just so that you can see the process of pencils, inks, colors, lettering, and uh, just setting that up so that you can do it. And you're, you're obviously going to go in and use a lot more detail and a lot more uh, kind, of, kind of thought involved in composing it and so on. So I'm just going to show you really fast. So let's grab our pencil and let's just uh, put it approximately how we would want our panels to look on the page. So. I'm not going to divide them like uh, with gutters. I'm just going to put lines to show approximately where I would like them to be. And let's pretend we were going to do uh, kind of a three row design. And we could even use one of our uh, templates if we wanted to, but this, this will suffice. So this is approximately when I actually use the, the panel cutter, I'll, I'll use these as kind of a guide. And this is going to be the, the panel that we're going to use. And let's just draw a zoom in on it and draw a character. And I really encourage you to walk through this process and do it yourself because just watching it is not going to be the same thing as actually doing it. And uh, so let's take a look. So let's just draw any face. Let's just draw. And it doesn't have to be a masterpiece, it just has to be something that qualifies as a face. And let's see. Mm, I don't know. Let's just give her some wild hair. <laughs> kind of going off the page. And give her some kind of big old cheeks. <laughs> and she's going off the page like that. And Okay, so she got kind of out of control. I don't know what's going on with her face, but that'll qualify as a face. And uh, now we can uh, ink this. So let's change the opacity. I'm not, I mean, not the opacity. Let's change the color. We could lower the opacity a little too. And then let's add a second layer for the ink. And uh, I'm going to label these just so that you can see what they are and make it a little clearer for you. And I'll call this one pencils, even though it's kind of obvious because it's the only one that's going to be a color layer. So pencils, and I'll add a, a color layer in a minute, but let's ink this first. Actually, before we do that, let's put down our, uh, 
our frame. So let's go to the the frame, oops, down here. And again, it's under this one with all the different tools inside. And go to frame and let's get a rectangular frame. And I'm not gonna do just this one though, I'm gonna do the entire page. Because as I told you before, it's kind of makes it a little easier to to keep the panels even. So that'll do. Okay, and about there. Okay, I'm gonna zoom out. It looks about right. And now I'm gonna take the divide frame folder and we wanna be on straight line and I'm gonna just make, actually I don't have my sketch here so I need to actually move the sketch to the top so I can see it. There we go. And go back to the frame now we're going to divide it. And I have these at 54, 54. I don't know if that's going to be wide enough. Let's take a look. Uh, that's a little too wide, actually. Let's make it a little smaller. Let's make it about 40. And then we're going to divide it. I'm holding down shift so that it goes at right angles or at angles. And I'm just breaking these panels up based on my earlier sketch. And there you go. Now we can go back to this. And remember the white part is the panel. It's kind of like a preview in each of the frames. So I could see my upper left is right here. They're not in quite the same order because this, this is a Japanese program. So it actually starts in the right and then goes to the left. So it's right here and we see it highlighted now. The only thing is our pencils are above it and I actually want them to be below. So I'm going to actually put it in the panel for this one. And another way you could get around this would be to just not create your frames with uh, a paper layer and then put it underneath and then you can draw like right on top of the paper. But uh, this, this will work for this. I could just move it if I want to. And I'm going to go to here to the inking layer and zoom in. And I'm going to do a pretty quick inking job that will just also close up all my lines so that we can color it easily. And you don't have to, like I said, there's other ways to color, but if you do close your lines, it just makes it a lot simpler. And again, I'm trying to do this for speed so that we can get this all done. So you, you would obviously spend a lot more time on your inking. So I'm going to overshoot a lot of my lines. This is something I do very often when I ink because then I just go in with the eraser and kind of clean it up. I'm a little out of practice because I've been doing so many tutorials lately. So I'm actually looking forward to getting back to just drawing. And I, uh, I know I haven't done a lot of instruction in this tutorial because this has been more about the software. So I will probably at some point do more art related tutorials. I have a pretty cartoony style and that's the great thing though about the program is don't let the title manga studio think that you have to confine your art style to you know manga just because that's the origin it's great for any style whether you're doing photorealistic as you know alex ross or whether you're doing something really cartoony like 
um, Jack Cole or Sergio Aragon is you can go from pretty much whatever style you want and incorporate it. It's the tools, so make of it your own style and uh, don't feel confined by what's come before. All right, now I'm going to grab the eraser and hard eraser and just kind of clean up these spots where I overshot the lines. And you'll get better at this as you as you go along. Let's see. Oh, also I'm using with my pen, I'm using the anti-aliasing all the way up. And we talked about ways you can use it if you don't want to do that. And you can later on blur it or whatever, but I just prefer to work this way. Is this my kind of choice? But there's different options for everything. So let's see. Kind of clean these up a little. And this may take you a lot of practice to really, when you start to learn it, to actually get to your your lines really smoothly like that. But uh, it's it, you can learn it, so don't feel like if you're not getting it right away that you're never going to get it. It just takes practice. And also the level of your zoom, if you're too far out or if you have, your eraser size is not correct, you might need to kind of readjust it and kind of figure out the ideal whatever you're kind of cleaning up. And this is where that kind of zoom out and zoom in really fast is, is great, I think, because I can kind of just move it around and it's so much faster than if I had to use the original setting of two buttons or some other, or use the zoom tool, that'd be horrible. So this is so much faster. It was a little rough. There we go. All right, I'm not gonna go to spend too much time on this because like I said, I don't want the video to go too long, but I want to get the idea across. Okay, that'll do for now. Now we can turn off the pencils layer because we're done with that. And I'm going to add a color layer and put it below the ink. And uh, I guess the original plan was to call it an ink layer, but I, I lost where that one was because we created these panels. I forgot about them. Okay, so now I'm on the color layer. I'll label this color. And let's grab our fill tool and just uh, make sure it's about 70 and you can put the area scaling about five. And let's just color this. And hopefully, well, the closed gap is actually all the way up, so we'll see how that works out. Uh, it's, a, it's a little too high because it's not filling this how I want, so I'm going to actually turn it off and see how that works. Oh, it's too much. So maybe two. And I'll turn it all the way up. There we go. And let me get this part right here. Let's use the pen to kind of fill that. All right, that's good enough. And let's, and again, this is one of those things you're probably gonna spend a lot more time doing your coloring, but this is just to I can get the point across. And for all I know, maybe you do wanna do a really fast style so you can create a comic really fast. And for the background, I'm going to do something different just so you can see another tool that we use. Obviously, I'm not going to use everything that we did, but uh, I'm going to select the using our magic wand thing and make sure refer other layers to select is on. And let's go in and just get all these little white pockets in here. And now let's use one of our materials. Let's just make, uh, how about this one? Okay, that has shown up right here as a separate layer. And we'll continue in the next video because this one's already going a bit long and we'll learn how we can do our, we'll do a speech balloon and then we'll export this and then we'll turn it into a CBZ file. So we'll do that in the next one.